Hey there, welcome to day 109 of our BU 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that improves us in some way. Today we're going to talk about grief. This segment, this month, the month of April, we're focusing on the spiritual well-being area and aspect of our life. Remember there's nine areas and aspects of our life that I like to break down my life into. I call it the life framework. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, and contribution. Learn from Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, uh, I don't know if Napoleon Hill broke it down that way. He had 13 things and 30 uh, principles and 30 ways of being. There are 30 of the biggest mistakes people make as they're growing and, and, and developing. Uh, but it, last year in April, I added, actually it was a year ago now. Wow, a year flies by fast. Last year, this time of year, I added confidence and communication. Because I feel that those are core foundational skills. We are still coming out of the throes of COVID, we actually were still pretty deep in the throes of COVID and the pandemic. So <clears throat> I don't even touch that one with a 10 foot pole, but we still needed areas that we could work on and focus on and concentrate on to hone our skills. So as we're coming out of this and as the world is changing, we've changed in positive ways right along with it. Well, today we're going to talk about grief. Now grief is a, a huge topic. We're going to talk about the seven, it's either seven, 10, 14, just like everything else on the internet, seven steps and seven stages of grieving. And, and they're pretty commonly known, whether you've grieved or experienced them or not, you've undoubtedly encountered people in your life who have been grieving at some time or other. Uh, we'll talk about ways to help people when they're going through grief, and then five things that you can do to help work yourself through grief. Uh, grief is, now natural, well, loss is inevitable in life, right? We're gonna lose things, we're gonna lose relationships, we're gonna lose people, everybody's gonna die. I know, in case no one told you, all of us are gonna die someday, everybody's gonna die. We're all gonna experience loss throughout our life. It's inevitable, it's like change, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen, so you might as well figure out how are you gonna handle it. And grief is the, the process of handling that loss. How do we deal with it? It's a natural part of the healing process, right? Grief is the healing process. So what are these seven stages of grief? Did I get seven? Seven stages of grief. The first one is, of course, shock and denial. Whenever something happens, whenever we lose someone we love and care about, whenever we lose somebody, even if it's somebody we don't know, but that had an impact on our life, we're immediately experiencing shock and disbelief and denial. We deny that it happened. Oh, that can't possibly have happened, etc. Step two is pain and guilt. Pain of loss, of losing the person that we, um, is important to us and guilt over them being the one that, that passed away and not us. We're going to talk about it as if it's someone close to you that passed away. It's just easier if we pick one thing and talk about it than if I try to talk about all the types of loss we can have, right? There's lots of types of loss. Loss of a loved one, loss of someone that's important to us, loss of a relationship. Uh, my divorce, I had to go through the whole grieving process with respect to my divorce. Uh, loss of a business, loss of a job, loss of anything will trigger the grieving process in the majority of us. So the third step is anger and bargaining. Fourth, and this is usually the longest and the most complicated one, is depression, loneliness, and reflection. Reflecting on the relationship, reflecting on ourselves, etc. Five is the upward turn. Six is reconstruction, meaning we're rebuilding and reconstructing our life without the loss or after the loss. And finally, seven is acceptance and hope planning for the future, realizing that this too shall pass. Now, a couple of things. Number one, grief never goes away. I lost my father seven years ago, and I'm probably still going through some of the, the grief stages, but it never goes away. I lost my grandmother, who was just shy of 100 years old, <clears throat> I think four years ago now, four years ago this fall, and it never goes away. I miss going to her small town to see her every couple of weeks, right? I, there's just things that will always be with us. Uh, so let's talk about the ways that we can get past grieving and, and just a couple of things about grieving before we move on to how to help another person because you're inevitably going to run into people that are grieving. I mean, all of us, at, when you reach a certain age, you're going to funerals, you're going 
you know, you go through a phase where you're younger and you're going to weddings all the time, and then you go through the phase where you're going to funerals all the time. It just seems to be a natural course of life. So <clears throat> all of us, every human being, just like everything else in the world, by the way, we process grief differently. How you grieve is going to be different than I grieve, than anybody else on the planet. We're going to go through these defined stages because scientists and psychologists have studied grief and so they've identified these as stages but how long the stages last what they look like for you and for everybody else is going to be different because it's like everything else we experience it as only uniquely we can for each individuals and part of why we're here on the planet i say is to experience life and grief and loss is going to be a part of that um one of the, the ways to uh, get through the grieving process is to acknowledge your pain. Um, accept that grief can trigger all sorts of emotions and even unexpected emotions. It can trigger things in you from your childhood. It can trigger all kinds of emotions that might surprise you. Uh, eradicate guilt. Try to find ways to get over the guilt. and because Just because someone you love and care about passes away before you, does not mean that you don't deserve to live and you don't deserve. It means you deserve, you're still here for a reason. You're still not done yet. Um, two, invest energy into positive self-care. A lot of uh, people have a tendency to not take care of themselves after a great loss, but that's when we should do just the opposite. If we can flip the switch on that, <clears throat> it'll help us get through the grieving process faster. Uh, number three, ask for and accept support and help. Uh, make sure it's support that makes you feel good right? Because sometimes people will support and help us in their way instead of supporting and helping us in the way that we need to be supported and helped. Uh, it's okay to feel every single feeling. Whatever comes up for you is part of your grieving process and important to let yourself feel it and experience it and work through it. Uh, just because we feel something doesn't mean we have to, to stay in that feeling. You know, we don't have to stay depressed, but we need to go through the stage of feeling it and allowing it to roll through us before we can move on to the other side. Um, grief will always be there. Like I said, I I don't think that grief goes away. I think it just changes and it becomes something that we accept and we have hope and, and positive expectations for the future. We know that um, the person will always be a part of us. They're always a part of our experience in our life. They're just not with us physically anymore. So how do you help somebody else get through grief? I'm gonna share eight things and some of these are, are things that I needed to learn and still need to get better practicing. Number one, be a good listener. Always need to work on being a good listener. Number two, respect the person uh, and their way of grieving. How you grieve and how you think someone else should grieve is none of your business. It's, 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 uh, it's none of the other person's business. Let them grieve the way they're going to grieve. And it's going to be different than the way you grieve. Uh, number three, Accept mood swings from people that are going through a loss and, and dealing with a loss and grieving and handling the grieving process. Um, avoid giving advice. Very important one, but very hard for the vast majority of people on the planet to do. Number five, refrain from trying to explain the loss. This is one that I really, um, I learned at my dad's funeral. And ever since, and I've been very conscious, conscious of it, whenever anyone shares that they've had a loss, it's really hard to know what to say, Right. Because almost anything you say will either come off as trite or, or insulting, right? You know, oh, he lived a good life. He was old, da, 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 da. Well, just because he's old doesn't mean you wanted him to die, right? Just because my grandma was almost 100 years old and had a great life for the most part doesn't mean I wanted her to not be in my life anymore. So when people say that, it just kind of digs the knife in deeper. So... Uh, number six, so don't don't try to explain the loss because nobody understands it, right? Death is an inevitable part of life, but it doesn't make us feel any better for us to tell for people to tell us something that we already know. Uh, it's like telling my daughter to not be upset when she's clearly upset. It just triggers her to be more upset because nobody wants to be told how they're feeling when they know that they're feeling in a negative way. Number six, help out with practical tasks. You know. There's so many kind things that we can do when somebody is going through a loss. You know, you see funerals and uh, whenever anyone passes away or whenever anybody's got cancer or is really sick nowadays, there's these 
food chains that people will create on the internet where people can provide meals and food for the family, et cetera. Uh, stay connected, but that's really nice. Go over and help clean someone's house or do everyday tasks, get do some shopping or something for people, whatever you can do that would help them to get through the grieving process and take a load off of their mind so they don't have to worry about some of the everyday practical mundane things. Uh, stay connected and available. A lot of people say that they're available, but they really aren't. So remember, if you're offering something, make sure that you're available to, to fulfill that offer. And then eight, offer words that touch the heart. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to say things and talk to someone, sometimes you just have to quietly be with somebody. That's all they need. Uh, but if you're going to say something, share heartfelt stories and, and anecdotes that will help the person to remember the person that they've lost and in a positive light, etc. So what's our action item today? Today we're just going to share in the comments below. We're going to think about the grieving process. Think about how we grieve. How do you process grief? And I'm going to think about how I process grief. And then um, share in the comments below just one person or one thing that you've lost. I could say my dad, my grandparents have lost all my grandparents, my aunts and uncles. I've lost all of my aunts and uncles on my dad's side. Um... I've lost cousins, I've lost friends, I've lost um, associates, relatives, etc. Uh, I've lost businesses, I've lost relationships, I've been divorced. Uh, I've lost businesses, jobs, opportunities, all kinds of things. But I would probably just say my dad or my grandma because they're the most recent. My grandma's actually the most recent. So, oh, pets, we've lost pets, right? Things that we love and care about that are important to us will trigger the grieving process. That's it. Any comments, any questions on this today, please ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow. And we are talking about, I think, connections tomorrow. Connection. Uh, spiritual connection. All right. Have an awesome day. And I will see you tomorrow.